With Antonio calling with Jack High, he's not going to let Antonio take this pot right here. With a pair of seven, Scott calls. Turn is a queen of diamonds, and Esfandiari makes a straight. The crowd is not reacting to Antonio making a straight. Someone must have made a long putt on the 14th hole. <laughs> there are three other tables in action, so the crowd responding to uh, action throughout the room as Esfandiari bets 7,400 after Fishman checked. Fishman not laying this hand down easily. He lays it down nonetheless, and as Fondiari takes down the pot. Yeah, he had to lay it down. All he had was a pair of sevens and a uh, very dangerous board out there. So the control match continues between the two young guns. Not until yes. Fishman trying to find out if Antonio had anything. Blind still at four and 800. Fishman was suited King Jack and he'll call. Queen six for his Fondiari. He raises to 3,000. Antonio continues to go to the whip. Now in this particular hand, Scott Fishman could raise back. He's got a big enough hand, King Jack of spades, but he chooses to just call. Flop is six, eight deuce and his Fondiari flops middle pair. And on that pair of sixes, he bets 4,600. He would have bet regardless of what came out on the flop. Scott Fishman has let Antonio take the lead in his hand, and it's cost him the pot. And Antonio Esfandiari takes down the pot. And there has been no sudden pressure change in the cabin. What's happening now is over the PA system, Ali Najad, the uh, tournament MC, has just announced the payouts. And it seems that Antonio does not want to hear the uh, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. He's not the only one. A lot of players don't like to know how much they're going to win. Back to our feature table now, where chip positions are just about even between Phil Helmuth and Lyle Berman. Lyle listened with open ears when they announced the prize money. It's not going to really make a difference in his portfolio. Lines up to eight and sixteen hundred. Berman with suited queen five calls and Phil checks with seven six. Flop comes nine seven five. Each player flops a pair. Helmuth checks, and now Berman will bet out with thirty five hundred. Wants to see where Phil is at. See if Phil has any of that. It's a good bet by Lyle. Turns a four of diamonds and Helmuth now has a two way straight draw. Ever cautious, he checks. The river brings a set of fives for Lyle Berman. But Helmuth, unaware of that, bets out 1,600. Lyle's going to raise. He's caught his dream card. On the set of fives, another 6,000 from Lyle Berman. Trying to bet enough to entice Phil to call. The percentages there means that Lyle Berman will win the hand as long as he doesn't fold. Lyle's not folding. Oh, well, you hit a five or you hit nothing here. Phil is analyzing the hand perfectly. Again. I think you have a five here. Let me just think about this. Yes, I got to call it. Pair of four. What? Pair of fours, sevens. Phil is giving the victory spread with his sevens. Lyle has told him he has a pair of fours. I apologize. I hit a five. I thought I had a four. Phil's going to love this. Jesus. I mean, you, you know I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> I thought I had queen four. I had queen five and made it seven. And he just, they just left 7,000 on the end and then found a hand when he, I mean, what's that? I apologize. What the hell is going on here? But wait, I know and I still would have bet it. He bluffed off all his yeah. money. I called him. I could see he was bluffing. It was clear to me. Yeah, it was. And yeah, he accidentally had a hand. And I looked back and I didn't have the fours. I had the five. <laughs> By the way, the, the guys in our game would tell you I do it all the time. Uh, what do you think, Gabe? Well, he may have misread his hand, but I'll tell you one thing. He didn't misplay it. <laughs> <laughs> A CEO oversight. How rare. I saw Ken Lay and Bernie Evers cheering in the background there. <laughs> More from the Golden Nugget right after this. Welcome back to the National Heads Up Poker Championship. Let's go to Lindsay Zarniak. 
Two years ago, Chris Moneymaker did what every American dreams of. He turned 40 bucks into 2.5 million, proving that with a little practice, anybody can beat the top poker players. And that is what started the modern poker craze. Casinos have been building new poker rooms or expanding current ones to keep up with that demand. And as poker's popularity has grown, many professional players have become so-called celebrities. And some celebrities have become so-called professionals. Ben Affleck, Jerry Buss, and James Woods all have earned the respect of the poker community. With books on the subject hitting the bestsellers list and the television ratings for poker shooting through the roof, it really seems like the poker boom has only just begun. There's Johnny Chan, one of the faces of the poker craze. He certainly helped bring poker mainstream when he appeared in the movie Rounders with Matt Damon. Over to one of our outer tables now as Mike Sexton takes on Chris Jesus Ferguson. Blinds up to four and 8,000 in this match. And Mike Sexton tried to pick up the 12,000 of blinds by going all in with a queen four of clubs. Unfortunately for him, Chris Ferguson woke up with an A6 and he called him. Mike will be out unless he wins his hand. And the flop brings a pair of sixes for Chris Ferguson. At this point, Mike needs a queen or two clubs. Turn and a queen for Mike Sexton. Mike rubs his hands together. That's just what he needed. Brother Tom loves it. At this point, uh, Chris is going to need an ace or a six. The river is a nine of spades. That means that Mike Sexton's ladies hold up. He doubles up and survives. Mike Saxton was one lucky lady away from elimination. Now if he doubles up another time, he'll take the lead. We take you back to our feature table now where Phil Helmuth has a slight lead over Lyle Berman with the blind still at 8 and 1600. And Helmuth with suited 10-8. He calls. Lyle Berman, courtesy of the Amber Bach pocket cam, with suited ace tray. He raises to 7,600. Helmuth calls. Now, if three diamonds come out there, it's going to be a disaster for Phil Helmuth. From disaster to dream as Helmuth flops a full house. Berman checks. He has no idea what he's run into here. Phil bets out 4,000. Good bet. Doesn't want Lyle to go out. Wants Lyle to think that maybe he's trying to pick up the pot. 12. Another 12 from Berman. And Lyle has fallen into Phil's trap. He thinks Phil is bluffing, and he's raised him 12,000 with ace high. Now, what does Phil do? He's got the absolute nuts, the best possible hand you can have. Helmuth re-raises to 37,000. Now, he thinks that Lyle has a hand at this point. Berman lays it down. If Lyle would have had a 10 or an overpair, he would have been committed. Phil Helmuth calm and in the lead for the moment, but you never know when Mount Helmuth will erupt. I want to win more than any other poker player in the world. God dang! Dealer, push him the chips. You know, when you get unlucky, it drives me crazy. I should shut up. I had him broke. The one that my outbursts hurt the most is 100% me. And I've tried for many years to try to correct this flaw of mine. And uh, it turns out that this flaw is, you know, now making me famous. And now everybody's saying, oh, he does it intentionally. No, I've been acting the same way since 1989. I'm not proud of that. I want to turn over and I want to be able to handle myself the way that a nine-time world champion handles himself. And I'm, I'm still working on it and I suspect it might take a few more years. Yes, it might take a few more years. Let's come back in 2052 and see what's happening at that point. <laughs> Helmuth with a better than three to two chip lead over Lyle Berman at this point. Suited deuce tray for Berman, and he calls. 9-8 for Helmuth, he checks. Flop is king, 8-8, eight, eight, and Phil Helmuth flops trip eights. They both check into the turn. Jack of clubs, 